westerlands are a place of countless rugged hills and rolling plains, of misty dales, craggy shorelines, a place of blue lakes and sparkling rivers, with fertile fields of broadleaf forests that teem with all sorts of wildlife, where half-hidden doors in the sides of wooden hills open up into labyrinths of caves that wind their way through the darkness to reveal unimaginable wonders and vast treasures. The region lies along the coast of the Sunset Sea, with Iron Man's Bay and the Iron Islands to the north. Part of the northeast and westerlands even extend to the ruins of Oldstone and the Blue Fort. Along the coast is Castley Rock, currently the seat of House Lannister, a fortress carved out of a massive hill of solid rock. Near the rock is Lannisport, a port and one of the largest cities in Westeros. The headwaters of the Tumblestone and the Red Fork begin in the westerlands and flow east into the riverlands. The main pass through the eastern hills guarded by the Golden Tooth, a castle which controls access to the river road, leading to Riverrun. Further south is the Gold Road, which runs east to King's Landing. Deep Den watches this road, with Hornvale to the north and Silver Hill to the south. The lands of the west are rich lands, with temperate weather fruitful, shielded by high hills to the east and southern borders, and the endless blue waters of the Sunset Sea to the west. Once the children of the forest made their homes in the woods, whilst giants dwelt amongst the hills where their bones can still be found on occasion today. But the first men came with their fire and bronze axes to cut down the forests, plough the fields, and drive roads through the hill country where the giants made their abode. Soon, the first men's farms and villages spread across the west, from salt to stone, protected by stout moat and bailey forts, and later on, great stone castles, until the giants were no more, and the children of the forest vanished into the deep wood. Many great houses trace their roots back to the golden age of the first men, before the coming of the Andals. Amongst them are the Hawthorns, the Foots, the Brooms, and the Plums. The Westerlands are not the largest, most populous, or the most fertile part of Westeros, but they are the richest. Full of hills and crags, the land is dotted with mines, from which pour gold and silver in astonishing quantities. There are gold mines at Castley Rock, the Golden Tooth, Castamere, Nuns Deep, and the Pedrick Hills. However, there are also settlements which have become ghost towns due to the nearby mines running out of ore. Besides farming, there is also some fishery in Lannisport and on Fair Isle. On the small island of Fair Isle, the long ships of House Farman help defend the western coast against the ironborn reavers, with whom plunder up and down the Sunset Sea, with the riches of the Westerlands catching their gaze. The green fields raised a vast timber castle called Bower, built entirely of weirwood. The reigns of Castamere made their rich system of mines, caves and tunnels as their own subterranean seat, making it almost impossible to capture conventionally, whilst the westerlings built the crag high above the waves in the tall hills. Other houses sprang from the loins of the legendary heroes, of whom tales are told to this very day. Each of these families became powerful in their own right, and some in time took the styles of lords and even petty kings. Yet by far the greatest lord in the westerlands were the Castellese of the Rock, who had their seat in a colossal stone that rose beside the Sunset Sea. Legend tells us the first Castellese lord was a huntsman, Corlys, son of Castor, who lived in a village near to where Lannisport stands today. When the lion began preying upon the village's sheep, Corlys tracked it to its den, a cave in the base of the rock. Armed only with the spear, he slew the lion and his mate, but spared the newborn cubs as an act of mercy. So pleased were the old gods, they sent a sudden shaft of sunlight deep into the cave, and there, in the stony walls, Corlos beheld the gleam of yellow gold, a vein as thick as a man's wrist. The truth of the tale is lost in the mist of time, but we cannot doubt that Corlos, or some progenitor of what would become House Castelli, found gold inside the rock, and soon began to mine there. To defend his treasure against those who would make up with it, he moved inside the cave and fortified its entrance. As years and centuries passed, his descendants delved deeper and deeper into the earth, following the gold, whilst carving halls and galleries and stairways and tunnels into the rock itself, transforming the gigantic stone into a mighty fortress that dwarfed every castle in Westeros.